eternal life. Heaven is, this I'm pretty, it's pretty cool. Bethlehem is God with us. Calvary is God with us. Heaven is us with God forever. Oh, I could have put God with us, you know, again, but I thought it was just cool, us with God forever. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John 17 and 3. Here's questions I get all the time. This is one, do I, why should I know God? Or try to know God. A second one is, does God really see me? I'm not talking about, gotcha. <laughs> you know, how, how many times have you, 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 know, you don't even see so much and they finally go, gotcha. Like they're trying to find you and get you, mess you, and gotcha. No, no. Does God see me? Again, he wants to know me. In order to know me, he has to see me. I honestly, you know, it gets me when these guys on television, when, when they're saying, make sure, these preachers say, make sure that you send your checks to us. Make sure that you do this and that this week. And just remember, we love you. Okay. Then, how about give me a ride on that Lear jet? I got to go. <laughs> I got to go somewhere. You think you're bringing that Lear Joe over here? No, I was thinking about I was thinking about DC the first time. The very first time DC had a job and a bed in Georgia at an army base. And he had his truck and he was ready to go and he broke down just outside of Dunn, North Carolina. And he said, Daddy, the truck's broke down. Daniel's in Afghanistan. And he wants to borrow Daniel's truck. And he knows Brandon's going to get in his truck. So, especially go that far. So, he says, Daddy, can you get a hold of Daniel? I said, I'll try. When I get a hold of him, I'll get, I'll get your truck for you. He said, okay. And he said, well, I need to get off the side of the road, and i got to get something going here. i got all these things that got to be in this Army base. Uh, what it was was mock helicopters that they used in the bombing fields to actually train, train their <coughs> pararescue guys could load somebody in that thing and lock him in there, and they could go in there and take him out and, and train. So DC may have to lock on the six of them, I think. So, so then he said, Daddy, I don't know what to do. I said, well, I said, I know a guy that's got a truck and a trailer. He said, who's that? I said, Wayne. And he said, there you go. So I called Wayne. I tell Wayne what's going on. Now, do you think I could have called uh, Joel Osteen? Mm -hmm. Do you think I could have called Billy Graham? I never called any of those guys. I called, I called Wayne. I said, Wayne, as soon as I get Daniel's permission, I'm going to drive that truck down there. He says, where's he at? And I told him, by the time I got there, Wayne was already there. Y'all already had most of the stuff already loaded up, didn't you? And then we get going down, and we, we get really me and Wayne leaving, and then we get a phone call that Daniel's truck broke down. Uh -huh. So we turn around. I mean, this is, this is one of those classic things that ought to be on television, the redneck breakdown. And so, you know, by the way, we all got it all through that day, and we got it back. And I was thinking about that thing, and I said, you know, it's awesome to have that kind of stuff around you and to have that kind of relationship with people around you. And God wants to be the same way. You know what I'm saying? All right, we left this truck. I, don't walk. I can't remember all the things we did now, but we'll we stop someplace and... And Wayne's thinking, we need this truck here for a while. <laughs> so we left the trailer with the truck. We were, we were playing all kinds of marbles and checkers and went to a Ford place and God blessed and we only cost like $100 to fix the truck because it was just, God was working through it all. It was amazing. And DC got to Georgia and got his, uh, got his stuff all down there. It, it was really kind of awesome that day. But, but again, God wants to have that kind of relationship. And he is watching. And because he is watching, he's going to take care of it. I told somebody just today that we're going, but I, I, I feel so all alone. I told somebody, hey, don't, don't worry. You're not, you're not alone. You are not alone. You just got to hold on and let God do his thing. Psalm 139, 1 through 6 says, Oh, Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. Now, when he searches you, it's a whole lot different. I mean, I, I remember riding down 33 one day while Daniel was still a road deputy. I ride down 33, and I look, and I see, uh, I, uh, I think we just 
We had just done who's Bill Parker's wife's funeral, I think. I'm coming back through, and, and I see this where the road goes like this on 33 and comes back up where that girl hit that tree. Uh, I look up there just before that curve. I look up and there's a right in the curve is a car. That's where he pulled over, and there's a deputy car behind it. And I see somebody's tail stuck out the road. A deputy's tail stuck out the road, and his head stuck inside the car. And I said, uh, and I said that that deputy is going to get his butt knocked off. He don't really care for him. Who was? It was Daniel. He was searching the car. Matter of fact, the guy had drug paraphernalia, and the guy said, told Daniel, said, like I told the last guy that got me. That's not mine. So Daniel went and searched his car and found plenty more stuff. And that's the stuff that he was doing like that got him on the drug boys because he was so good at it. And so, so he goes back in and I, and I, and I said, he said, Daddy, he said, I, he said the, uh, the sheriff used to be in the drug boys and said, uh, said he, he set us up. And he went through that. They set us up and said he went through the search and he said, I found more stuff after he searched. I said, well, that's good, son. That's a good search. Well, you know what? That's no kind of search compared to God. Because God <coughs> looks at your intentions. God looks at what you, not only what you do, He looks at your motives. He looks at your intentions. He looks at your makeup. He knows what makes you like you are. He knows what's going to take to get you out of whatever you're in. He knows all this stuff. He searches you from top to bottom. He goes in. He's got a thorough search. And He knows us like nobody else knows us. My mama knew me about as good as anybody I know. And my mama's not here anymore. But you know what? My mama don't know me like God knows me. Yeah, he knows our thoughts before we know them. That's right. So you know when I sit, you know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Which that's pretty good because I can't even know the word completely before it's on my tongue. <laughs> oh Lord, you hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. That's some powerful, powerful scriptures right there. I want to read the message version of that. It says, God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there and then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Wow. God knows us. And what's so much, most awesome of all is he knows me and still loves me. He knows me. You know, it, it amazes me is how, how I've seen people have a very rough coming up and done some bad things. And then they get in there with God. And they change and they really get good. And somewhere along the way they mess up again. They go back out of here. And they maybe go back out of here in a bad way. And God's mercy and grace is so great that he knows that they're going to mess up and turn back around. But he still blesses them and anoints them in that period. It's amazing to me how God is that, that much love knows me and still uses me. Why? Wow. Y'all got any questions so far? Number, number five.